In this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can weather your toys with Photoshop. Hello and welcome back to another toy photography tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys a technique in Photoshop that you can use to weather your toys. Now it does take a lot of work and it is pretty time consuming. It is easy to do. But in the end, it definitely brings your photos to the next level. Now I know you guys can weather your toys physically, but if you guys don't like we weathering your toys physically, this is a great technique that you guys can use instead. Now in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to do this by using a photo of my own. I'm going to gather up some textures, put them into Photoshop, show you guys how to layer them within the photo, use some weathered brushes to then brush those textures into my photo and as well as if you guys don't have your own weathered brushes I'm gonna show you guys how to make one as well so I'm gonna go ahead and open up my toy photo and we're gonna go ahead and get started alrighty so as you can see here we go this is the shot um, that we're gonna be using in today's tutorial as you can see I already removed the wire as well as do some preliminary exposure uh, tweaks to the photo itself but then from here we're good I'm gonna go and show you guys how to uh, drop in uh, various textures into Photoshop and then as well as then make a weathered brush that you guys can use so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm just gonna with these textures I chose three textures I'm gonna be using in my photo today and these textures um, all you have to do is what I use is um, a stock photo website called unsplash.com and all you have to do is just type in search like rusted metal texture, scratch metal texture, metal texture, metal surfaces, um, just anything to kind of um, search and it'll bring you a lot of stock photos that then you can use um, for your uh, toy photography um, as far as textures go. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to drop them in. So I opened them up in Photoshop after I downloaded them. And we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna move this into my photo. Go ahead and drop it in. Boom, ends up being its own texture. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger and have it cover up my toy. Now from here what you can do is you can then change the blending mode to multiply and kind of it gives you an idea of where those textures are going to be hitting your photo. So if you wanted to say like rotate it here, rotate it there, then you can do that and it kind of just gives it a different look. So I'm just going to go ahead and let's like just leave it right here. Okay. And then from here, I'm going to switch it back to normal. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mask it. Now to mask something, all you have to do is select the layer and hit the mask button right down here. But what we're going to do is we're going to invert that mask to fill it black and it kind of hides it. And then that's how we're going to brush the textures in. So I'm going to go ahead and hit alt and then click the mask and see how I made it black and it hit it. And then from there, we're going to then use a brush to then brush the texture. So why I was emphasizing on why we want to make our own or you want to use a weathered brush, make your own or make your own, download your own um, or anything is because if you just use a standard round brush, I'm going to go ahead and just do and go ahead and select one. Let's go like just the hard one here. We're going to go ahead and zoom in. OK, and just make sure it's on white. Hit brush, make it a little smaller. Bam. It, see, it, it doesn't look very good. It's too like clean. Um, it just makes kind of lines. Even if you adjust the opacity, you know, it's still, it just doesn't look very good. Um, and it doesn't look real, like weathered. So what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and make our own weathered brush, but I also have my own that I use. And we're gonna be using those instead. So to make your own weathered brush or just brushes in general, um, we're going to head and I'm just going to use this texture, right? I think 
we'll go ahead and use this one. Um, just pick an area of the texture that you like. Um, so we'll just go right here because this looks like it has most of the texture. And we'll go ahead and then just lasso tool this. Bam. We're going to hit control C to copy it. Hit file, new, open up a new document, paste it in. Bam, there we go. So now what we want to do from here is we want to make this black and white. So easy way to do that is control shift U, made it black and white. Now I kind of want to have some more white and dark areas. We've got to make it really like white and black. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and invert it. You don't necessarily have to invert when you're making brushes. You don't have to in invert every single texture that you use. Um, it really all just depends. So we're going to hit control I to invert it right there. Now what we can do is we want to get these uh, darker points darker and make the uh, uh, whites uh, more lighter. All we have to do is hit control L for levels. And all you got to do is bring the levels in. See how everything's changing darker, darker, darker. There we go. And just kind of make it work um, however you would like it. So we're just going to make that really dark like that. Bam, like that. Hit OK. And then from here, since we have our texture now, we can go ahead and hit Edit. Hit pr Define Brush Preset. Hit Name whatever you want. Weather Brush. Name this one the Tutorial. Hit OK. And there we go. Now we have our brush. And we can adjust it from here. I'll go ahead and turn this off. Now we have the background layer. And see, now you can brush it. So now it still looks kind of like a paintbrush. It doesn't really look like a uh, like weathered brush. So what we want to do is go into the brush settings. So usually there's a bar right here. Go into brush settings. From here, we can change its shape to make it bigger. And here, and then using these, like once you adjust your brushes, after to, at that point, it really just comes up whatever you want to do, like whatever look looking for. We'll go ahead and adjust the angle too. Go ahead and do scattering here. Change the scattering. Kind of just scattered about right there. Okay. So we got the size and we'll adjust that. We'll adjust the spacing too. And then see kind of like made a, now it looks a lot different. Now it looks more textured. Um, it looks still kind of round. I think that's just because I kind of made too much of a circle. You can, you know, you don't have to make a perfect circle when you're lassoing it. Um, but from here, it definitely looks a lot better than using a rounded brush. So let me just show you what I mean. So I still I have the brush selected still, the one that I brought in. I'll just go ahead and make it smaller. I'll change my opacity to about like 40%. And then on the mask, we'll go ahead and change to white to reveal. And we'll just go ahead and start brushing. So as you can see, I don't know how well you guys can see that, it definitely looks a lot better more of a weathered brush than uh, before. So that's it. That's really all you need to do for making brushes. So now from here, we're going to go ahead and finish the weathering. Oh, want to do that. Let me make this opacity, make it bigger. Do. Oh, uh oh, I don't know. Hit some lag there. Just give me a second. Okay. So what we could do is I'm just gonna and delete that. I'll just remask it. There we go. Okay, let's move that back. Bam, bam. Okay, zoom it back out. There we go. 
Let's go ahead and cover him up again. Multiply. There we go. Normal. Oh. Right, edit. Alt. All right, there we go. So now I'm just going to go ahead and take my brush. See weather brushes down here. Doo, doo, doo. I'm gonna take a debris brush. Go ahead and zoom in. Make it small. I change my opacity. The opacity will change. Sometimes you go 50%, 30%. It really all depends on how it looks. So sometimes you know, sometimes you gotta go a little bit more so it looks like I go by like 70 even 80 percent. You know it really all it really all depends. So then from here I could just start weathering these edges here of his armor. And even then, if you're looking that if it's too light, all you could do, all you need to do is you could do a curves adjustment layer. So mine's a little bit too, too light and you can go ahead, oh, clip it, make sure you guys clip it. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make it a little darker. Right there. Just so that way we can see it. There we go. Bam. So then if I zoom out, I can see I can start seeing the, the weathering. Zoom in some more. Brush. Oh. Wrong brush. Wrong, wrong layer. There we go. And there we go. So that, as you can see, this is this this could be pretty um, time consuming, obviously. But if you take your time with it, it definitely pays off in the end. So, so I'm just like so. What I do is I kind of just go around. At first, I kind of I kind of get the edges, you know, really really darken them up you know look at different parts of the armor here definitely at the bottom there And from here, it's really just a uh, personal preference. There's really no right or wrong way to be brushing this. Um, you know, you kind of just keep going until you get the look that you want. And, and that's it. And you know this, and this technique just doesn't work with like toys. I mean, if you have rocks that you want to weather, um, vehicles, uh, things like that, you can, you can use the same, the same technique as well. Kind of get like some weathering up here as well. So I kind of just. You know, I just kind of just go around. I, I, I start with the edges and then from there, 
I'll uh, I'll drop some other uh, textures in as well. So what's really cool is like um, now you can drop in multiple textures too. So I also grabbed this one, which is like a scratchy metal. You know that way his armor really looks uh, scratched up here. So go ahead and back up. Go ahead and fit to the screen. And zoom that. And it's the same concept here. You just cover it up. Now with this one though, since it's kind of like metal, we kind of want to sit on top. Instead of doing um, like normal, we're going to go ahead and change it to overlay. Right there. Um, that way it gets a, a little bit more... Uh, because if you just did it as normal and then you did your brush, it would kind of um, overlay kind of does it a little, uh, it kind of fades in a little bit. So it's not going to be so like, bam, it's all scratched up. You'll see it, but it'll, it'll just give it a weathering look. So from here, it's the same concept. All you got to do is hit Alt. So after you drop that in, go ahead and hit Alt. Boom. Now it's masked. And then you just do that same thing, grab a weathering brush and just start brushing away and it will give you another um it'll add more textures see and same thing with this you can stack that in and go on and on and on just basically whatever type of texture and you can really weather um your toy but yeah that's there you go i'm gonna go ahead and fast forward to the end um because it'll be a really long tutorial and i'll show you guys my final product or my final photo i'm gonna add a little bit more elements into there um if you guys have any questions about the other elements that you'll see at the end of this video, go ahead and leave it a comment. I'll do another tutorial um, based on those elements. I'm going to be adding some smoke and some lasers, stuff like that. Uh, everything that you guys see in this video, I'll have a link down in the description along with all the gear that I use for my toy photography as well as all of my editing. Um, also down in the description, you will see uh, links to my social media as well as my portfolio and my website if you guys want to check out any more of my work. And if you guys liked today's video and found it helpful, please like and subscribe for more toy photography tutorials. I'm Brent England with Brent England Photography. Thanks for watching, keep taking photos, and I'll see you guys in the next one.